Hey guys, welcome back for another video. So I got a couple things to go over today. First, it's going to be a setup and demo of what the difference of adding some GIK acoustic panels to the room is gonna sound like, and I have no idea yet because I'm still in the middle of installing them. I'm gonna talk about them, show them to you, talk about how to order them, and we'll see what the effect is. Second, um, you know, I'm the whole point of doing these is to improve your room, and I am at the point with this system where I could throw more and more money into equipment, and it's not gonna give me much benefit because my bottleneck is the room. Now, what I've got in here isn't that much. I have three very nice full absorption panels. These are from Acoustamac, a company here in Tampa, and they custom made these with these art panels. There are thousands of prints you can choose from. They look beautiful, but more importantly, they work really well. They're rather expensive if you get the art panels, but frankly, that was the only way I could get these in the room because of wife approval factor. I let her pick out the design. I didn't really care. She came up with a bunch she liked. We both agreed on this. Easy sell. I don't care about the price. I just wanted the panels in here. If you want regular, just solid color panels, they have tons to choose from. Super cheap. I mean, like a third of the cost of these art panels. But if you do need a design and your wife is important in the decision also, or husband, or partner, or whatever, definitely give them a shot. Great to work with. Beautiful construction. They went right out. Ordering the GIK, similar but a couple differences. First of all, they specialize more in diffusion panels, and what I got are combination absorption diffusion panels. I thought they were pretty much just diffusion panels, and I thought they were like a piece of foam with a wood front, but no, they are not. They are actually full absorption panels, two inches deep, wood frame, pretty much the same construction as those, a little bit lighter though, but same thickness, and they're filled with acoustic insulation, and then wrapped with this protection on the back. And then that's wrapped with the color of your choice. They don't offer prints like those, but they do offer a couple dozen different colors. I got one that matches our wall perfectly. It's a gray. And then on the front, they have screwed in these slats of wood and they have about a dozen different designs and i have to believe the different designs work differently because some have a lot more holes than others this is kind of like a leaf pattern and again i didn't care which one we got as long as we got some i just let the wife pick everything and this is the combo she came out with she picked the design, she picked the color of the backing material, and you can pick four different types and colors of wood itself. This is the, I believe they called it gray elm. And note, it is not as gray as the photos on the website. It's almost just a light natural wood. I love it, I think it looks great, but the picture, the JPEG they use, makes this look a lot more gray than it really is. So don't be too scared if you don't really want gray wood. It's pretty much just a natural wood with like gray, low tone highlights. Looks fine. But this is just kind of floating above the surface. And the idea is all these different holes scatter the sound, diffuse the sound, and then what passes through soaks up into the insulation inside. So it's a combination absorption diffusion panel. And you use these in different places in your room depending on what kind of problems you need to solve. Now my room is terrible. When we first moved in, it was just an unusable echo chamber. We have beautiful bamboo floors, complete with puppy toys everywhere because Clover is a little monster. She wants to come in and help. <laughs> and uh, hard surfaces everywhere. You know, it's, it's pretty much an open baffle going that way. Glass wall there. Solid straight wall on the back. The front is a combination fireplace, and there's a big cutout nook here where I put the TV over it. 
solid walls behind the speakers. Now luckily I've got a lot of side space going from that tower to the wall so I don't have an early reflection point over there. No early reflection point over here so very lucky with the side dimensions and this room actually does work out very well even though I'm working on the um, shallow configuration of the scale. It functions great measuring the best spot actually is right up against the back wall. The null is actually about a foot and a half to two feet in from the back wall. It's just the way this room works out. So pure luck, this is a great setup, but it's a live room. Now, obviously, big 75 inch flat panel, I'm getting some reflections off of there. There's nothing I can do about that. I, I have this stupid fireplace. We didn't build it, but it's impossible to remove. So it has to stay. I would love it to be a Brigler wall and I would have had a screen put in, not in the cards. So we got to deal with the TV. The fireplace, obviously some sound is bouncing off of that too. And I would love to just put a big absorption or diffusion panel over it and cover it. Wife absolutely refuses to do that. Maybe if these panels make a big enough difference that she can actually hear and appreciate it like she did with these, she'll let me do it. But that's, that's the next tackle. It took months for me to be able to get these four new panels in. So I'm working on it, but I don't think that's as critical as what I'm doing today. So I want to treat these. When I first put in these panels, we lived with the house without anything for... I don't know, two, three months, and I got sick of it. I mean, it didn't matter what I tweaked in the system. Dialogue especially, it was just, you couldn't understand anything. It was so annoying to watch movies, and music was just not any fun. So when these went in, as long as you were in the seating positions, fairly close to them, day and night. I mean, totally transformed everything you watch and listen to. Huge difference. The rug, of course, made a difference, but not as big, but definitely helped. And that was in right away. So, you know, it wasn't terrible, terrible all the time. But without these, it was bad. These went in. I was happy, but it wasn't perfect. So what I'm hearing now is, especially in some tracks and Where'd my iPad go? I'll give you one example specifically that I'm having a problem with. So this track in particular, it's called Canoe or Cano, I'm not sure, by Cat Edmondson. It is extremely hard to hear the lyrics in this, in this room, on this system right now. And it's a combination. It's not only because of the system. It is a very challenging track to hear, even playing on some of my really good headphones. And that's partially due to the timbre of her voice, the way it's recorded, and the way she sings. She tails off the volume of a lot of her words right at the end. And it's just like, what, what? You have to have a really low noise floor. It's a lot easier if I'm listening in my quiet office instead of, for example, in the bedroom if the wife is playing something next to me. Even that bleeds through into the noise floor, even on headphones. Her voice is very high-pitched, almost fairy-like, and it's a little nasally. So it's in a very narrow range in the first place. And then combined with the tapering down and the backing tracks, it's just impossible for me to hear and understand, not hear, but understand some of the lyrics. But... When I go from the headphones, where I'm understanding most of it, but not all of it, most of it, and then I listen here in the living room, no, I can hardly understand any of it. It's too sibilant. It's too echoey. There's too much reverb. I can hear myself right now. There's a few milliseconds delay, and wow, I'm actually standing here. It's going to be different originating from the front wall, but standing in this rear wall, I hear my echo down the hallway going towards the front wall. So actually putting some panels in that hallway might help things. That's interesting. It must be bouncing just 
well, I'm directing towards it. I'm going to be surprised, I'm sure, because I'm going to do a quick set of clap tests from the front and it'll probably be different. But it's interesting that I can hear a very distinct echo coming from that wall right there. I can hear my voice carry down that way. <laughs> it's strange. But that's not how the sound system is going to be reacting. So long intro, but that's what's going on. I'm going to hang two panels on this side here and two panels on that side there, right in here. Basically, it's going to be a near four by four arrangement. Now, these panels aren't exactly two feet by four feet, unfortunately, <laughs> because the way it works out, I had planned to put them both vertically side by side to make a four by four square that way. This cutout is one half inch too small for me to do that but because they are slightly undersized on the long edge i can put them two by two lengthwise stacking them which also looks fine the way to the design is and there are a few designs in there where you can flip like there's one really cool one that i probably like the best but she hated it it looks like a waveform so you've got vertical lines or horizontal lines depending on which way you put it and they look like a, a music waveform. That looked really cool, but she didn't like it too, you know, boring. So anyway, um, you can mount these a variety of ways and brings me to one negative about my ordering process. Number one, Acoustamac, they had these shipped out next day. Made them up, ordered online, shipped, bada bing, bada boom. GIK, and they're based up near Atlanta, I believe over two weeks just to get out the door wasn't pleased about that they didn't mention anything about that on the website before you order it wasn't until the next day when they said oh we're running a little behind here's your ship date over two weeks in advance over two weeks out so didn't like that when i got them in they were all four very well protected individually and then all four put together in a bundle in a box no problem with that but each one was in a plastic protection bag, which was good. However, whoever packed them, two out of the four, the bag had slid down. And when they went around it and around it and around it with a tape gun, they were taping right on the fabrics. So lifting the tape up, I had to be really careful, you know, not to start pulling and ripping stuff. And it did leave some adhesive I had to get off. So that wasn't really cool. The other thing is they forgot all of the hangers. So there was no mounting hardware. I went and bought some. I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do with them yet. And I really don't want to put holes in any of my walls if I don't absolutely have to. These are just about 15 pounds, which means I can probably do it this way. And I'm just trying it this way. First, I'll use the hangers and drill holes or put in nails or hangers or hooks or whatever if I have to. I'm using the 3M command strips, which work fantastically. And four of these are rated for 16 pounds. So what I did is just put in two screws for each pad onto here because you can't put adhesive on fabric. And then this adhesives not permanently to the wall. And they really do work great. I have a ton of stuff up on the walls. In fact, these surround sound speakers, because they're like 35 pounds each, and these, because they're like 22 pounds each, are the only things I have in the house actually mounted, screwed in to the wall. Everything else, I mean, even that heavy clock up there is using command strips. All the other artwork and everything on the other walls, all command strips. So they're really cool. So I'm going to do some clap tests right now. I'll do one at each speaker, one in the middle. And then I'll hang them up and we'll see what kind of difference it makes. And man, I'm hearing that echo back there again. <laughs> It's so strange. Let's go. Okay, now I'm going to draw my big heavy curtain. And this is how I normally watch movies and listen to music. We'll just see what kind of a difference it makes. That was without.
two panels up. Interestingly, with this up, now the echo down the hallway is very apparent. It was obviously more balanced before. It's not that anything increased down the hallway, but this is now deader. So I'm noticing that a lot more. Just adding that second panel. It's closer to my ears. Definitely want to treat that hallway next. And now all four up. That is a dramatic difference. During the before and even the one test, standing here in the middle, it just sounded like a normal clap. Now it sounds like my clap is down the hallway. There's that much of a direction shift. I'm not hearing anything reflecting back from the side. It's very strange. I can still hear that the room is a bit live. It's not dead by any stretch of the imagination. That is different. Even standing here, which isn't really indicative of what you guys are hearing or what I'll hear during the editing, there's a noticeable less reverb. It just sounds, well, deader for lack of a better term. That's all there is to it. That's even different than just having this up. I'm amazed that they're making any kind of noticeable difference just doing this test. I didn't really expect that. Standing where I'm standing, I expected to hear something in the video, but not standing here. So it's interesting that that many reflections are bouncing off that back wall and were going back over there and then coming back enough that I could tell a difference. I'm not going to call this day and night or dramatic, but it is very noticeable and it's obvious. I just didn't expect that. It's really strange standing right here talking because my left ear is getting pounded by hallway echo, I mean, literal hallway echo. Hardwood floors, nothing on the walls, all the way down 30 feet to the front door. And I just hear my voice delayed and nothing over to the right. It's almost like my ear is up to one of those panels on the right. Okay, I'm curious now. I'm just going to stand here. I can hear a difference. I didn't show this on video, but I did a clap test back here. And I can definitely hear a difference. So the whole room is quieter. That's interesting. I, I didn't think about the noise floor, but it is noticeably quieter. I had a measured noise floor of about 52 decibels the last time I did a test with REW. I'm not planning on doing that anytime soon again, but I'll definitely pay attention to what it is now. Okay, so now the question is, do I need to or should I rerun the Yamaha YPAO calibration? I'm thinking Definitely yes, since I can hear a difference. If I hadn't have heard any difference standing here, I might have said, well, maybe, maybe not. I'm thinking definitely now, because if I'm hearing it back on the front wall, it's definitely going to make a difference back on the back wall. Not so much for the EQ. I actually don't use it for EQing these front speakers. They are that good. I use what's called the YPAO front feature. And what that does is runs the front as is. So if you have really good speakers with a great sound and a great response, it keeps it. Doesn't apply any curve to the two main channels. And then what it does is EQs all the other speakers to match the response of your fronts. 
So it's kind of like, okay, you know, we know you spent some good money and you've got a really good front. We're not going to mess with it and we'll let the rest of the gang join in. So for these speakers, that's definitely the way to go. And I know I've hooked up a few of you that have these and got these specials lately and you agreed with what I just told you. Now, interestingly, with all other speakers, including other Polks that I've had, that was not the case. Um, without the at least flat, sometimes the natural EQ curve, they, the main sounded like garbage and running with the EQ dramatically improved it. Not so in this case. In this case, the Yamaha EQ makes these sound like garbage compared to straight. So anyway, I'm going to rerun it and then I need to do some subjective listening tests. In the near future, I am planning on doing some actual sound demos for you guys so that you can kind of get a feel for what these are doing, especially now that I have these panels up. So I'm going to get busy, recalibrate, see what happens. All right, so this is very strange. Nothing has changed with the system or wiring or anything like that. Just adding these panels, I don't know if you can see it, might be a little overexposed, but YPAO is now telling me that my rear surrounds, my front left, right, and center are all reversed phase. Doesn't make any sense to me. It must have to do with how the signal from the speakers are now interacting with the room and hitting the mic. So I can't imagine that they really are reverse. It's telling me the Atmos and the two subs are in one phase and everything else is in another. Uh, I don't believe that's the case. <laughs> so I'm just going to ignore this result. Just another really quick, interesting thing. Looking at the EQ curves here, this is what the Yamaha YPAO wants to give it if you do it for a flat response. Without these, it wanted to put in some crazy EQ curves into the two main speakers, and they are pretty darn flat here with the panels up. It wants to give a nice kick to the extreme top end, the extreme high end of the right one, a little bump to the left one, and a little tiny bass pull down. But other than that, these lines are a lot flatter than what they were before. I'm still going to run front, so it doesn't do any of that. But it's interesting that they made that change and it picked it up. So I'm glad I ran it. All right, results definitely did even more than what I was hoping it would do. So been playing a lot of test tracks and going back to the one I talked about earlier, which had precise defined problems in what I was hearing and not hearing and the smearing of the lyrics, especially comparing it to really good headphones and knowing what it should sound like and being able to understand the words. Pure and simple. It is really weird talking here. It's like my, it's like I have headphones on and the left one is raised up. It is so incredibly dead on this side. I have no reflection of my voice. Seriously, it is very strange. I'm sorry, it's throwing me off. So, and I gotta treat that hallway now. Echo, echo. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm excited. Okay, first of all, Highly recommend treating your room no matter what you can do, no matter what you have to do. It makes a huge difference. Every step you do makes a palpable difference. Adding a rug makes a difference. Adding whatever panels you can wear makes a difference. More the merrier. I'd love to do some more in here. Wife won't let me. There's more wall space in here. I would love to deaden it further. And I'm, I'm definitely, without a doubt, doing that hallway right now. Just have to figure out what the wife will approve of. I don't care. I'm ordering something. Big heavy curtain made a difference. Everything you can do to improve your room improves everything else. If your room isn't the best it can be, stop.
trying to improve the rest of your system. If you're lucky and already have a room that has soft furnishings and beautiful bookcases filled with things to naturally diffuse the sound, if you, if you already have beautiful heavy curtains, great, go crazy, start upgrading, start enjoying. But if you're like me and your room is lacking, or it's a multi-purpose room, it's a, it's a living space first, you have to deal with a significant other, whatever, just do what you can, but know that you will be rewarded. Trust me, I am a skeptic. I wasn't expecting this to do as much as it did. I figured with as much wood there and as much diffusion instead of absorption that they wouldn't be as dramatic a difference as when I added those panels. It is every bit as dramatic. You don't get the weird, complete sound suck when you're talking at them like I did the other ones when I did that video. You, you talk into it, your voice disappears in the pure absorption panels. It doesn't do that here, but the effect on the room is every bit as dramatic. So, what this did to this particular track, I would say it 90% cured the problem that I was hearing. There were still a few words here and there. The especially sibilant words where she trailed off the volume. They were still just a little hard to understand. And there's still a few words I don't even know what they are. I haven't, I don't think this has lyrics. I wish Amazon Music had lyrics like, uh, like Tidal does. Is it Tidal or Spotify? I can't remember which. I've used so many of them. Anyway, comparing it to what I can hear in the headphones, it is 90% as good. And that's such a dramatic difference. I don't hear any of the smearing on any of the lyrics. Whatever she's saying, it sounds like it's now just coming from the front, and I'm not hearing any natural echo from her lyrics from her voice itself. When she trails off, it stops. Another very interesting thing that I didn't expect or count on at all was a difference in just the transient of the bass, just the punchiness. There's what I'm assuming is a very large stand-up bass in this particular track. Again, it's canoe, canoe, C-A-N-O-E by Cat Edmondson, Cat with a K. So the stand-up bass before these panels, it was a beautiful sound. Goes all up and down the range. Subs are playing it seamlessly. You know, it just sounded great. No problem there. Now, with these panels on the lowest notes, there is actually a kick in the chest, just like a kick drum, with every pluck the note. And it didn't have that at all before. It it made me look up and wonder where'd that come from? Am I hearing a, an actual drum in the track now? But no, it's just the pluck of the bass notes. I don't know what these are doing to the bass. I didn't expect anything because they're really not too near the subwoofers. But whatever they're doing, that's another effect that they're having. So yay, that was really cool. There was something I wanted to say about GIK. Oh, yes. So, the cost. Overall, very happy with the cost. These were um, 99... Okay, well, here's the thing. Here's my rant. They have pretty deceptive pricing on their website. Not just these, but other things like this. So they have three sizes of these panels. These are the large called rectangle, approximately two feet by four feet. They're, they're not exactly, but approximately. They also have a narrower strip that's, uh, I believe, a one by four, and then they have a square that's a two by two. These are the most expensive, but for a hundred bucks a panel, I don't call that expensive. You can't buy them for 99 bucks. You can only buy them in a pack of four. So with tax and shipping, you're almost 500 bucks. And that's the cheapest you can get what you just saw and what I just heard. So know that going in, pay attention to the fine print on what the actual quantity of the product is, and then you won't be shocked at the price. But very happy, 
highly recommend not only the GIK panels, but the Acoustimac panels, and whatever you can do for your system, it'll be worth it. That's it. Hope it helps somebody. See you next time.